Let's take a look at the mechanism functionality that comes with every license of Creo Parametric. And on the screen here, I have a linear actuator, and I wanted to show a simple slider connection, which allows translation in one degree of freedom. And I have to give a shout out to Thompson Linear. I started looking online for some models to download, and I came across Thompson Linear's website. And what you can do here is configure which of their products that you're interested in and then download the CAD models. And that's a really cool thing that they provide to people who haven't even bought their stuff. And if you take a look at the model that I got from them, this is a fully featured Creo parametric model, which is just cool. I'm, I'm really uh, excited about that and able, I'm excited that I'm able to use their model. So again, Thompson Linear, thank you very much for doing this for people. All right, and to make this model easier to see and work with, I created a combination state just for mechanisms, and this uses an appearance state, it uses a cross section, uh, and also uses a style state to make one of the components transparent. And so the way that I want this linear actuator to work is that inside of the tube is a rod and it's supposed to be able to translate with a total stroke of about 24 inches. And if I take a look at that component that's supposed to be able to move, it's this one over here, I'll click edit definition. And right now, the way that they provide their models is that everything is located with a fixed constraint. But I want this to be able to move, so I'm going to delete that constraint. And instead of using constraints, I'm going to use a mechanism connection. And the way that you get to your connections is from the drop down list that says user defined. And so some of the different ones that you have in here include a pin connection, which allows one rotational degree of freedom. I'm going to use a slider connection here, which is one translational degree of freedom. There's also cylinder, which is one translational and one rotation. Planar has two rotation, one translation. If you go into the help section in PTC's uh, website, you'll find what the different connections are and the available degrees of freedom. But again, I want to have a slider connection for the one translational degree of freedom. And so to set that up, first it wants to know what is the axis of translation. And you can define that by picking actual datum axes, or you could pick cylindrical surfaces, like the cylindrical surface for the tube and the cylindrical surface for the rod. And then to eliminate translation, you're going to pick two flat surfaces or two datum planes. And I'm going to turn on my datum plane visibility. I'm going to select the datum plane called top from the rod and the datum plane called top from the tube. Let me turn off my datum plane visibility to reduce my screen clutter again. And that's all that you need to define it. But you can also define your zero references and also establish the range of motion. And so to define the zero references, I'm going to pick a flat surface from the assembly and a flat surface from the moving component. Right now, the current position shows that there's actually a little bit of interference. So I'm going to change that negative 0.01 to zero. And I'm going to enable a regeneration value and let's also set the minimum and maximum limits and I'm going to have the minimum limit be zero in other words when that rod is bottomed out inside of the tube and for the maximum limit this is supposed to have a stroke of 24 inches so let's go ahead and use that value and now I'll click the check mark and I've established the mechanism connection. If you take a look at the component in the model tree, it has got a special symbol next to it, which looks like a dot inside of a box. And that indicates that there is a mechanism connection for placing that component in the assembly. Now I'm going to go to the model tab and you can use the drag components icon to test the motion. So I'll click on the moving component and I'm capable of moving it. 
and then it stops. I keep on trying to move my mouse out to the right, but it's hit that 24 inch limit. I'll drag back the other way. It bottoms out at zero, 24, zero, and so on. And in this dialog box, I also have the ability to create snapshots. And with it dragged all the way in, I'm going to create a snapshot and I'm going to rename that. I'm going to call this retracted. You can call it whatever you want. And let's also click it and drag it back out all the way to the maximum position. And I'm going to take another snapshot. And this one I'm going to call extended. And so now I can easily toggle between these different positions in the list. But what I'm also going to do is I'm, I'm going to click on this button over here, which will make these different snapshots available as explode states in a 2D drawing. Also, if I'm using combination states as part of model based definition, these will be available in the explode states there. And if I export this out to a PVZ file for use in Creo View, they'll be available there as well. Let me go back to the retracted position and I'm going to close this. I want to show you that export of a PVZ file. Let's go to File, Save As, Save a Copy. And here in my working directory, I'm going to change the drop down list to say PVZ, the Creo View format file, and then click OK. And the Creo View file has been created. Now let me open up Creo View, hit the open button, and grab the PVZ file. And here it is open in the screen. If I go to the preset explode, there you see extended and retracted. So I'll go and choose extended and then retracted. So again, by making the snapshots available for use in drawings, you also have them available for you to see inside of Creo View. All right, let's get out of Creo View and head back over to Creo Parametric. And now let's take a look at some of the analysis functionality. And before I do that, let me turn off the display of my cross section. And so to access the mechanism mode for doing analyses, you'll go to the Applications menu and then choose Mechanism. And the interface changes. You'll see that I am on the Mechanism tab in the ribbon. And you get an icon on the computer screen that indicates the connection. And uh, let's go and define our motor that we want to use for applying motion. And the way that I find easiest to do this is to locate the connection in the mechanism tree that opens up. And here's the translation axis. And when I click on it in the mini toolbar, we have an icon for defining the motor that we want on here. And let's go to the profile details. Right now it's defining the position, but I'm partial to velocity. And this is going to be in inches per second. It's going to use the current position as initial. And then from our drop down list, we have about eight different kinds of profiles that we could use. And I'm going to use a constant velocity, but you can also do a ramp, cosine, cycloidal, parabolic. And you'll see as I'm positioning my mouse over these different profiles for the motion. It shows an equation which explains how your different parameters are going to define this motion. So for example, if I were to use cycloidal, I have coefficients of L and T. And again, this is the function that would define how L and T are used. But again, I'm just going to do a constant velocity. And let's have it go at two inches per second. And I'll click, oh, let me hit the enter key. And now I'll hit the check marks. And now I have my motor created in here, which I can see in the mechanism tree. And also there is a symbol in the graphics area. So I've got my motor. Let's go and define a mechanism analysis. And I'm going to leave the default name. 
When you go to the drop down list, there are five different kinds of analyses that you can create here. The position analysis is the old Pro Engineer 2001 version of the analysis that was used for doing motion. Uh, the kinematic analysis is a true kinematic solver, so I recommend using that instead. And so this is going to go from 0 to 10 seconds. And for your initial configuration, I like to specify one of my snapshots to use as the starting points. And so I'm going to have it start at retracted. Then from the motors tab, that motor that I created is going to run from the start to the end. And we can click the run button. And there you can see the motion as it ran through there. I'll click OK. And in the mechanism tree, I, I can expand analyses. That's the analysis that I created. And we could play that motion. I'll hit the play button. You can crank up the speed. And right now it's just going to loop over and over again. Let's stop that. If you go to the capture button, this allows you to output this as a movie. You can control what the movie output is going to be. In this case here, MPEG or AVI would generate those different movies. Uh, and every single license of Creo Parametric comes with photo rendering capability. So if you photo rendered this and defined your room and your different lighting effects, uh, you'll end up coming up with an, a movie that's going to look pretty darn good. I'm going to cancel out of here because I'm not actually going to save this as a movie. Let me click the close button. Uh, also, from the playbacks dialog box, there's other different outputs that you can generate from here. Uh, for example, you can generate this out as a .fra file to use in other different animation software. You can also create a motion envelope. That'll create a part of that consists of the volume that different components move through and you can use those for laying out space claims you have collision detection settings by default it's got no collision detection but there's also global collision detection where you can have a check between all the different components and then if there is collect uh, collision you could specify what action that you want it to take i have a couple extra options in here because i have a config option uh, I believe it's called Enable Advanced Collision. That gives you a couple extra choices in here. I don't see why you should have that set to no. I have it set to yes. All right, let's cancel out of here and then close. And so just to recap, in order to use mechanisms, you use a connection for assembling components as opposed to constraints. And then you could drag to test the range of motion and generate different snapshots and make those snapshots available as drawing or excuse me explode states for a drawing view or a combination state or creo view when you enter into mechanism mode you could define motors in your model and then run analyses and generate various different outputs i hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www creowindshield.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe button to be informed when other videos are uploaded. And again, I just want to give a huge thanks to Thompson Linear for making their models available for free to everyone. Thank you.